Welcome everyone. Today we're going to go over one of my games in the World Open Chess Tournament um, of 2024. So prior to this event, I was working through International Master Alan Safar's course on Chessable. Uh, it is on chess psychology. Uh, maybe I will open it up to show an example. Um, it's called Preparation in Psychology in Chess. Um, so like, of course, I've got all these modules completed, but also in particular, I've been working through the videos of this course. Um, I think psychology is a very important aspect of chess. And um, yeah, this is a very, um, very- well I am international, ma. Very well done course. Because, um, yeah, we've got International Master here in this one, uh, covering psychological chess aspects, as well as a, um, a mental performance coach um, who is, like, certified uh, with psychology. And um, so I was taking these lessons for this game in particular, um, like, and I'll try to recall some of those times throughout the game where I use some of those techniques to refocus and get back into the game. Um, so without further ado, we'll go through it. Um, so e4, c5. Uh, I always go for the Sicilian defense and he goes c3. So c3, psychologically speaking, I always never liked the elephant defense because it kind of takes me away from the positions that I'm very used to. Um, which is like more sharp, um, like interesting positions like this. Um, like, uh, like this and e6, queen d2, a6, castles, bishop e7, f4, b5, and um, there's like a million branches here. I think bishop e2 might be the most popular. Um, Oh yeah, no, it's bishop f6, g f6, king b1, and um, games go like this often. And so, I'm I'm more used to these positions, um, but instead, my opponent goes c3, which is very solid, and it. The game's the character of the game is less like that of a Sicilian, um, like a classical Sicilian, like the Kozul variation in particular. So I go to out of six. It's the best in my opinion this move, um, but d five is better if if you want like a simpler uh, position, um, and there are some good lines in this as well. So e5, knight d5, knight of three, d6, e takes, queen takes. This is all theory. Um, and this is kind of another challenge that I've always had with this Alapin. I always tended to forget the theory, um, partially because of my disinterest in such positions. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just also because I also never understood these positions very well. So before this event, I was studying like the Alpin maybe for two weeks, like looking at some master games. Um, and yeah, um, black has good ways to fight, like, um, like putting the pawn on c4 or gaining like some temporary material advantage and giving it back later. Uh, so there, there are some strategies like this. I go knight b6 and then play c4. This is actually, I believe, in um, Sirith's um, chessable course on the Sicilian. I have both his and um, Sam Shanklin's. Um, I only just started Sam Shanklin's, which is a little bit late. Um, like, I actually never, believe it or not, I've never used chessable courses to learn the Sicilian at all. Um, only recently I'm starting to use it because it's needed at my level. 
So bishop c2 and queen e6. Um, I think Sirith, I think that's his name. Uh, he recommends to get the queens off. Um, so this is a good opportunity. And uh, now there are several problems to solve for black in this position after king f1. Um, and my opponent was telling me, like, he, he noticed these problems as well. Like this bishop, you get to go only to g7 because this e6 pawn is blocked. And this bishop on c8 is also blocked by my queen. So my pieces are kind of all on top of each other. And white is just ahead in development here. So I go g6. D4. This, I believe, is the top move, believe it or not. Um, the other move, I think, might be like b3, uh, something like this. Um, like b3, I think I go bishop g7, knight a3, then we take, and then yeah, knight d5. I think knight d5 is the move. But, um, you were following a game of uh, Eckeberg, C. Eckeberg versus Tor Frederick Kassen. So that's what they played. But no, instead, uh, my opponent went d4, and so he took with a bishop. I was actually afraid of bishop e3, um, and it was very complicated. I did calculate this during the game. And. For bishop b3, I think I was I was playing queen e6, trying to hold on to this pawn. Um, but then there's some ideas like this, and it gets very shaky. Like my dark squares can become weak. Like I might have to bite the bullet and play bishop e6, unfortunately. Or if I go e6, there's some ideas like this, and um, like maybe black is okay, but like yeah, it's just a complicated position with um that's a very complicated position for sure like so the king's misplacement is offset by the weak dark squares um in this example um i just made some moves i don't know if those the best but i was planning queen d6 after this but no he said he took i just develop h4 Queen d5. So my plan here is eventually I want to exchange my bad bishop for that excellent bishop on d3. That bishop on d3 is the best piece in the position. So um, clearing space, losing some time, but I'm arguing that that h pawn move is not a developing move, so I can move my queen again. Bishop e3. And I just castle here. Like, there's no emergency to play bishop f5 immediately, in my opinion. I can just develop pieces here. And he goes queen c2. Huh. Yeah, it's really weird because, like, my queen is, like, preventing him from moving his bishop because he doesn't want to exchange queens. So he goes queen c2 here instead of develop developing his knight. Um, which, if he did this, uh, I was... Gonna go for something like this. Um, just it's easy to play. Um, I think whites in black's position. Um, but um, yeah, he plays queen c two. It's a little artificial of a move, and so I go rook d eight anyway. Ninety one. He has to defend. I calculated king here in the game, and um, yeah, his idea. Well, my idea is uh, rook here. And then you're going to say that these are very bad pieces here. Um, and on this point, I think I was planning to play just knight e6 still even, probably. Though knight c4 is also probably not bad as well. Um, but like this would give me extra protect protection for the rook down here. And um, I can consider bishop f5 next, maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, let's see. What does the engine recommend? It does say knight c4 immediately is really strong. 
But uh, 9c6, it still says it's good for black, so I would have held the advantage here. Excellent. Yeah, but apparently knight c4. Okay, so knight c6 does come up now as the best move, so I think I understood this position very well. But uh, yeah, he goes 91, and then I go knight c6. This should be 4. And then I go for the check. King g1. Now knight c4, double tech. And he moves the bishop to a terrible square. This is undeveloping the bishop. And now my pieces, the evaluation, my mental evaluation has changed in this game. So now like, um, originally in my evaluation, white was more active. The pieces were more active and developed. But now black is more active and developed here. And I felt very confident in my position. So I go bishop f5 now because um, I need to take over these Dara light squares here. And so bishop f5 makes sense. Otherwise, um, white is great. White is fine if I can't infiltrate uh, those squares. He goes b3. He probably, yeah, he, I guess he could have taken on f5. And um, I guess the position is just very complicated. Um, that's what the computer goes through. I don't think I would find those moves in the game, but yeah, he should have just taken on f5 and who cares about this square? Um, yeah, like if I can check, like this is actually not a threat really. Um, I'm sure he can disconnect me somehow. Like, I mean, well, we'll look at that again. Like, definitely, um, yeah, black is still better here, but, um, yeah, I guess this is still really good for black. Never mind. <laughs> but he goes b3. So I go to the 96. Now I'm not going to have the structural problem as in that previous variation. And now my knights are active. He hits my queen because, um, yeah, I think I was threatening something here. Um, yeah, knight b4 was my threat here. He was afraid of knight b4, that's right. So that gained some time for him. Um, and he develops. And believe it or not, I think knight b4 still works here. Because of this idea. It's very, very complicated, but um, yeah, we can definitely win like that. Which this idea, it is playable, possible um, in the game. I didn't go for it. I just developed and played rook c8, keeping the threats active and just finishing my development here, staying principled. Um, and then he goes c4. This weakens the dark squares, but he's trying to activate his queen side. And I go queen d1, just trying to attack those back pieces. And then he goes for bishop d2, um, kind of defending his back rank. And so now my queen is very active on this g4 square. And um, technically I am threatening with knight takes h4. Um, yeah, this is very tough. And now I'm threatening his knight. Technically, um, you know, bishop takes, there's rook takes. And so he goes f3. Um, weirdly, the computer says his best move is to give back the give a piece here. And um, yeah, black is just winning here. Uh, so f3 was his try. But now I have this move bishop d4 check. And if he goes king f1, I have mate like this. Um, 
So f3 was a really good try for him, but it didn't work out here. So he has to give up the queen, and I decided to go queen g3. I thought this was a very strong move. Um, what the idea of uh, queen takes on d4, um, I think I was going to do, well, I think that doesn't work. I just have to take with a knight here, and then I'm just winning cleanly. Uh, yeah. And this is really bad. So he tries to kick my queen, but then I have this move here. And um, yeah, my queen is re-centralized. I'm controlling his knight squares. This knight's going to drop. And um, he resigned. And so throughout the game, like I remember there are certain periods, psychological periods, where I had to kind of readjust myself or to the situation for each changing move. So I think after h5, I was going on a walk around the playing hall and trying to use those techniques in the psychological course. Um, I think another time I walked away or was trying to readjust myself was um, around here. Uh, like for the queen, queen b4 check in advance. I think I was around this move when I was also um, walking around or trying to readjust my thinking. And um, so there was an, that's two moves here. So this move, move 15 and um, I think move 12. And then another move, let me see. Um, and so yeah, bishop f5 I don't think was hard for me to find. I already saw in advance that these squares are weak in the back. And then um, re-centralizing was not hard to find. So I did uh, go for a walk around rook a2. Like, rook a2 I, I wanted to readjust myself psychologically during the game. Um, so I played rook c8 here. And... Um, yeah, like, I, I, to be honest, I had a hard time calculating stuff. I was just so nervous and excited at the position that um, I just couldn't see anything. Like, I, So I just played rook c8, and it worked out to be a good developing move. And then, yeah, the rest of the game, like, I felt very confident. Like, I was expecting him to exchange queens, um, and then there's some problems on this back rank with these pieces, like forking and stuff like that. Like I'm winning a knight, um, and then queen g4. I felt very confident. Like I was thinking about the Nakamura game and the candidates um, against Vidette, I believe, because I know. Remember, I mean, I know Nakamura lost that game, but he made some good aggressive um, piece placement. Uh, it definitely feels more psychologically better to be attacking your opponent. Um, and I remember Alan had a video of his, of one of his games in his course where he was doing such moves like this, um, like making some aggressive movements to put some psychological pressure on the opponent. Um, and, but in this case, this happened to be the best square, I believe, for the queen. Just because uh, the queen side is really, really behind in time, so black has time to go for the king and then um, attacking those pieces. And then I ended up winning just like this. So this is a good game. Um, I appreciate everyone watching and supporting and please um, make sure to subscribe to Alan's YouTube channel here. Um, the link will be in the description of this video because um, I I'll probably get to post this on my channel and um, maybe I'll put this on Alan's channel. Uh, so thanks for watching. Have good luck with your chess and uh, have a good rest of your day. Peace.